Hi friends, welcome back. In the last video, I discussed about three modes of DNA replication. That is conservative, semi-conservative and dispersive mode of replication. Out of these three, which is a correct model that explains the DNA replication was a question. We never knew the answer until Misselson and Stahl did this experiment. Matthew Misselson and Franklin Stahl, they did this experiment during 1958 and they proved that DNA replicates in semi-conservative manner. Misselson and Stahl in this experiment, they used mainly two key elements, that is Esterichia coli and N15. They used E. coli as a model organism in this experiment. And one more key element is N15. N15 is a heavy isotope of nitrogen. You all know that normal nitrogen is N14 and N15 is heavier when it is compared to N14. Do you know why specifically they have used heavy isotope of nitrogen? Yes, it is because nitrogen is a very important constituent of DNA. It is present in nitrogenous space. So when you use heavy isotope of nitrogen, it can be easily distinguished from the normal nitrogen based on the density. So in this experiment, they have used one more technique that is density gradient centrifugation. So what do you mean by that? It is a very simple process in which particles can be sedimented or separated based on the density under centrifugal force. So here, N15 being heavier, when it is undergo centrifugation, it settles down at the bottom of the centrifuge tube when it is compared to N14. So N14 being lighter, it occupies a top position in the centrifuge tube. So it is similar to how ice floats on the water and stones sink in the water. So ice cubes being less denser, it floats on the water when it is compared to stone. So stone being more denser when it is compared to water, it sinks in the water. Similarly, N15 being heavier, it occupies a lower most position. So here the medium used is not water, it is cesium chloride. So that is a basic idea that they have used in this experiment. Misselson and Stahl in the first step, they grew Mysteriacea coli in the medium containing heavy nitrogen. They provided heavy nitrogen in the form of ammonium chloride. So they have added ammonium chloride containing heavy nitrogen to the medium and they grew Mysteriacea coli for several generations. What do you mean by several generation? It is like single E. coli divides to form 2, from 2 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 16 and so on. So what happens when it grows for several generations? Obviously E. coli incorporate heavy nitrogen into the DNA because when it grows for several generations there will be DNA replication or there will be synthesis of a new DNA or in other words there will be synthesis of a nitrogenous base. So to synthesis nitrogenous base it requires nitrogen and the only source of nitrogen available in this experiment is heavy nitrogen. So E. coli don't have any other option. It incorporated this heavy nitrogen into the DNA. So it is similar to our condition during COVID-19 lockdown. So during lockdown, we were not allowed to go out to eat pizza or burger. So what we did? We stayed back at home and we ate whatever the food available in the house. Similarly, here E. coli require nitrogen to synthesize DNA and the only source of nitrogen available is heavy nitrogen. So E. coli don't have any other option. It incorporated this heavy nitrogen into the DNA. As a result, DNA become heavy. Later, Misselson and Stahl, they selected some of this Escherichia coli and they extracted DNA from it. And the extracted DNA later it is subjected to density gradient centrifugation. So after centrifugation, they observed the centrifuge tube under UV light. When they observed it under UV light, they got a band of DNA at the bottom of the centrifuge tube. So which suggests that this DNA which is present in the band is heavy. So it is heavy because it incorporated N15 into the DNA. As a result, it has become heavy. And same thing we got in the experimental result also. In the second step, Misselson and Stahl, they transferred some of this Escherichia coli which is grown in N15 medium into the medium containing normal nitrogen that is 
n14 and they allow this e coli to grow for one generation what do you mean by one generation one generation means a single e coli divide to form a two e coli so they have kept it for one generation or they kept it for 20 minutes because generation time of e coli is 20 minutes generation time means it is a time required by the e coli to divide once so they kept this e coli from n15 medium to n14 medium for 20 minutes so they allowed it to divide once Later, the DNA were extracted from these cells and it is subjected to density gradient centrifugation. Later, the centrifuge tube were observed under UV light. This time when they observed it under UV light, they got a band at the intermediate position or at the middle of the centrifuge tube. So, it suggests that the DNA which is present in this band is neither heavy nor light. So, if it is heavy, the band should be present at the bottom of the centrifuge tube. So, if it is light, it should be present at the top of the centrifuge tube, isn't it? But the band is observed at the middle of the centrifuge tube. It suggests that it is a hybrid DNA. And if you remember my last video where I have explained three modes of DNA replication, we have got hybrid DNA only in semi-conservative mode of replication. So in semi-conservative mode of replication, the parental DNA unwinds or uncoils and each parental strand acts as a template for the synthesis of a new strand. So here parental strand containing heavy nitrogen and each heavy strand act as a template for the synthesis of a new strand. Obviously the new strand will be light nitrogen or containing normal nitrogen because it is grown in the medium containing normal nitrogen. So hybrid DNA will be formed that is DNA containing one heavy nitrogen and one normal nitrogen that is N14 and we have got the same result in the experimental result also. So that is regarding the second step. In the third step, they kept Escherichia coli in the same medium. Same medium means medium containing N14 for one more generation means 20 more minutes and they followed same procedure that is they extracted DNA, they subjected that DNA to density gradient centrifugation and they observed this centrifuge tube under UV light. This time when they observed it under UV light, they got two bands. So one band at the intermediate position of the centrifuge tube and one band at the top of the centrifuge tube. So intermediate band represents hybrid DNA and the DNA which is present at the top of the centrifuge tube represents a light DNA. And same thing can be explained using semi-conservative mode of replication. So as you can see in this diagram, in this step, the hybrid DNA acts as a parent for the synthesis of this DNA. So hybrid DNA unwinds and each strand acts as a template for the synthesis of a new strand. So here DNA strand having heavy nitrogen acts as a template for the synthesis of a new strand. Here the DNA strand having light nitrogen acts as a template for the synthesis of a new DNA. As a result, we have got two hybrid DNA and two light DNA. So same thing we can visualize even in the experimental result. So even in the experimental result, we have got half hybrid DNA and half light DNA. So that is the result of third step. In the fourth step, Misselson and Stahl, they allow this Escherichia coli to grow in the same medium, that is medium containing N14 for one more generation. Or they allowed this Escherichia coli to grow for 20 more minutes and they followed the same procedure. So at last when they observed this centrifuge tube under UV light, they got two bands. So one band at the center of the centrifuge tube or at the intermediate position and one more thick band at the top of the centrifuge tube. So they have got one thin band and one thick band. And this can be explained again with the help of semi-conservative mode of replication. As you can see in this diagram, in this step, these two DNA hybrids act as a parent for the synthesis of a new strand. 
So in this parent, the two DNA strands unwind and each strand acts as a template for the synthesis of a new strand. So here one strand consisting of heavy nitrogen which acts as a template for the synthesis of a new strand. So this strand containing normal nitrogen acts as a template for the synthesis of a new strand. So in this parent, both the strands have normal nitrogen. So the DNA containing normal nitrogen is produced. So out of 4, 1 DNA was hybrid and 3 DNA were light. So we got the same result even in the experimental result. That is 1 fourth of the DNA were hybrid and 3 fourth of the DNA were light. So that is how Michelson and Stahl, they proved that the DNA replicates in semi-conservative manner. In the same year, one more scientist that is Taylor and his colleagues, they conducted similar kind of experiment on Visia faba that is beans plant with the help of radioactive thymidine and again they proved that DNA replicates in semi-conservative manner. So that is regarding Michelson and Stahl experiment. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.